get this show on the road. Oh, wait for Aaron. <coughs> Are you good, bro? <laughs> yep, yep. Did you not have such a fucking weak immune system for once? I am fucked up now. <laughs> I really don't know why I'm fucked up now. It's kind of crazy. I got these menthol sweets that make me real sleepy like, but I'm good to go. Hi there, and welcome back to the Astartes Anonymous podcast. Today, we have a fun, goofy episode planned where we're going to discuss the silly, hypothetical battles between Space Marine characters and characters from other universes. And for the first time in a while, we actually have the whole team present. So, once again, I am pleased to inform you that I have found myself trapped in a steel cage with a gnome, a wendigo, and the fabled Mothman. I'm your host, Tom, and these are my co-hosts. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. My name is Lucas, or better known as Moots. Hello, I am Red, and I'm going to fuck his corpse when I'm done. Jesus, Jesus fucking Christ, that's not getting past the census. <laughs> Hello, I'm incredibly, I am incredibly sticky. Someone help me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I need the lotion. <laughs> it Put puts the lotion, the lotion in the basket. In the basket. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How are we all doing tonight, gentlemen? Oh, doing great. Doing great. Mm. Uh, just uh, taking it easy. Having a good time, you know. Yeah, I'm having a great day. I just caved in the skull of my neighbor with a ball-peen hammer. Ah, understandably. Lovely. Standard Californian activities. Yeah, of course. Of course. It counts yeah, all the time. State law appliant. Um. <laughs> it's the, it's the, yeah, I, I was using a California compliant ball peen hammer. It was all above regulations. <laughs> but no, I'm oh. going to be sticky from taking off one of my like tattoo things at the second skin, and it's fucking awful. Were you meant to take it off? Yes. Oh, so you're meant to be sticky. With the skin? Unfortunately, oh, yeah, yes. You can, you can, you can take the skin off. I do it all the time. No, no Night Lord. Skin. No, Night Lord, get away. Back in the box. Back in the box. Get out of here. <laughs> Give the thing to me. Give me your skin. <laughs> Give me your skin. <laughs> that thing. Give I it wish to me. wear it. <clears throat> well. There's the only reason I will ever give up my skin. Uh, if it's uh, used to make a fancy shirt, then you no, can have it. No, I'm going to use to make fucking <laughs> tablecloths with it. Oh, oh no, <laughs> how dare you. <laughs> what, guys, you're, you're, you're missing the, the obvious... Our, our first I'm sorry, but you're missing the, the obvious the... use of human skin. Mm -hmm. What's that? Clearly, an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> it is water resistant. Mm. It is. Not bad, <laughs> oh not bad. You know what, Red? When I die... I'll have all of my tattoos cut off so you can use them for coasters and other household accessories, okay? Because I appreciate you. That's fucking horrible. Oh, God. We believe in recycling here, all right? Yeah. <laughs> An eco-friendly podcast, man, all right? Everybody. Yeah. Recycle, God. reuse. Nothing goes to waste here. <laughs> Recycle, reuse, reskin. There we go. <laughs> if we petrified it, I could, like, turn it into, like, a coffee mug or something. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mean, oh, yeah. Uh, to, uh, leather is just animal skin that's been cured, so you can do the same thing with human skin in theory. <laughs> I mean, it's actually a thing now. I want to turn Aaron's uh, Venusaur tattoo into a coffee mug. <laughs> yeah, coffee that was mug. a good shout. Dope. Not gonna lie, into, into like a wine hat. skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, when we when we reach our Mad Max arc <laughs> and we all become like bandits of the wasteland, like Tom is gonna yeah. be, like, <laughs> have this fancy wine skin, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's a nice design on it. Where'd you get that from?" Oh, a friend. <laughs> I got it from a friend. I, got it. I, I literally got it from a friend. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. This is the best tea cozy I've ever held in my life. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> I'm pretty. The reason I'm pretty sure that Tom would have it and Aaron would be dead is because Aaron would be dead without pe penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. That's what you get for worshipping Nurgle, you dirty fuck. Oh my it's, god. It's a pleasant life. <laughs> it's and once again, actually, once again, actually, Aaron actually has a cold. Yep. I don't know what it is. We're coming to the point now where we've almost got more episodes with Aaron recorded with him <laughs> suffering than without. <laughs> Fucking yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. If I had my way, y'all be suffering. <laughs> Fortunately, don't you're not having your way. Time. <laughs> right, gentlemen, do we have some models of the week to talk about? We sure fucking do. Who Red, would you, you like to talk about Are the you first a one? Fucking cop or something? Jesus Christ. <laughs> fuck off. 
<laughs> okay. Well, the first one we got is uh, done by one of our uh, great server members, uh, a man by the name of Nextron, who does a lot of really good Chaos Marine kit bashes for his homebrew warband called the Doomed. And he took the uh, the Indominus, not the Indominus, but the Leviathan Terminator Captain that recently just came out. And he did a whole bunch of fucking green stuff witchcraft to turn into like this chaos warlord and Terminator armor. I love it, the work he's done on the uh, the cape. Oh, oh, yeah, he, like, he made the, mm. the cape is flat on the original model, but he, he was able to like sculpt on like the green stuff trim. Yeah, mm. really the impressive. Thing, the great thing about it is that because he's supposed to be a chaos warlord. And, like, the roughness of the trim doesn't really matter because his armor is degraded. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it works really super great. well. Mm-hmm. And all the really all just little bits and bobs, random junk just sticking out of him. It's just uh, wonderfully put together. That's Pete Chaos Warlord. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, he, like, he made it, like, he made it really seem like this isn't just one complete suit of armor. Like, it's a, bit, a bunch of different pieces welded together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he has the... He has the front of the uh, eight bound for the chest plate. He took some eight bound feet and put them in place of the Terminator's feet. He sculpted yeah. the power fist from the Chaos Terminators to hold a hammer. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was about to say that's, that's not... really impressive. That yeah. hammer is, I believe, from the Varen Guard uh, mm-hmm. Slaves to Darkness kit. Mm-hmm. I didn't actually. I was about to ask because obviously you've spoken to him quite a lot about this kit bash. I was about to ask how he'd actually managed to wrap the fingers around it because I haven't seen the work in progress photos of this thing. <coughs> yeah, he just he just cut he uh, he just cut around the fingers, drilled the, the the handle of the hammer in, and green stuffed around new fingers. Do we know about the lineage of Nextron's uh, warband? It's supposed to be word bearers, but this guy's an iron warrior. Uh, okay, <clears throat> I remember seeing him. I remember seeing him have a little joke at the fact that everyone's like, "Oh, they are Death Guard, they are they are green." I remember <laughs> yeah. seeing him a joke about that in the uh, server. Uh, and just for reference, everybody watching, when we refer to the server, we are referring to our Discord server. It is down in the link below, right there at the top. Uh, feel free to join us, submit join your own stuff. Us. We will show them off just like this if we like them. A feel free shameless. to ask Moots for art commissions. He accepts all of them. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. For free. He accepts yeah, all for of them. Sure. Absolutely. He may not do them this year though. Ask Aaron. How long has Aaron been waiting for that commission, Moose? Oh, soon a year. Not long yeah, enough. Fuck <laughs> me, man. <laughs> oh boy, you got a good deal on it, though. I did get a good deal. It didn't involve <laughs> the waiting time and the small print. <laughs> you, did, did, did you want to get market price for that? We could have done that. <laughs> Be happy with what you get. Like I said, every yeah. time you mention it, I push it back one way. <coughs> it's, uh, it's just <laughs> that one wasn't on me, man. That was that was on Tom. That wasn't on me. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we talk about the uh, Wolfram's dinosaur? Our next model of oh, the week. Oh yeah, our next model. The of dinosaur the week, in the room. Dinosaur, this dinosaur thing. in the room. <laughs> Holy shit! This thing is fucking crazy. Like God, I know. Wolf is a regular master fucking craftsman when it comes to painter, but god damn the uh the just transitions and the colors and the the way he like painted the scales and the Yeah. And, oh it's, god. Really mm-hmm. impressed. Mm-hmm. Really impressed with the non metallic metal on the uh, sort of armor pieces around the yeah. middle of the thing and on the front of the dinosaur. I was about mm-hmm. to say, yeah, that's probably my favorite part. It's just so- fucking nearly flawless it's insane so me and wolf talked about this model <laughs> a lot and uh there's a few things that this is an old out of production forge world model it's like called a Cer- uh, sephirum like tyrannosaur destroyer or something it's a really really old model for the lizardman from uh warhammer fantasy so the thing's just a huge chunk of resin and uh, along with that the non-metallic metal he did for the gold he did not use any actual yellow. That's all green. Oh, oh, fuck? that's fucking splendid. Yeah, like, that's funny. He, he used uh, various uh, saturated greens to make the, the the gold, and no actual yellow was involved. Jesus Christ. Yes. Well, well, that's funny because, that's, you know, usually uh, we, we obviously uh, uh, see 
gold that's like a yellowish color, but it's actually a combination of green. So it like makes total sense. It's yeah. uh, that's genuinely fucking impressive. Uh, well, Wolf's I, understanding of color theory is really impressive, and he's, you can see crazy. that in the, uh, the Discord where people will ask about things, and he will often get pinged for that express reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and like you know, it's uh, hard to miss the amazing painting, but like even the base is just impressive. And uh, I just uh, I have to give a shout out to Wolf for uh, complying with my <laughs> my uh, my um, request of adding a little froggy boy to the base. Oh, uh, I see him! Oh, the, I see him! <laughs> yeah. I see him! I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to speak to Wolf and get a zoom in on that for the oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> for the screen behind us because that is very cool. <laughs> Love he has boy. a well, he, that he is defending that frog with all of his might. M- no, maybe. Red, that frog's defending him. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that frog is an old one. Confirmed. Yes, <laughs> that was tiny in the corner. <laughs> uh, and this model's on eBay as well. Funnily oh, enough, yeah, it is. Right, gentlemen, should we move on to our main segment? Hell yeah. Excellent. Before we go in there, I want to st- start off with a statement, right? For oh, today's God. for today's subject. Now, suspend. We have to all suspend our disbelief a little bit because arguing these facts with Warhammer fans is basically like arguing with a kid that makes the everything proof shield. Yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, these is move- one. These are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, it's okay. No, please. If I'll take it, I know that this might ruffle some feathers. This this talking point today. So make as many disclaimers as you need. But yeah. But anything <laughs> being said, aside from two of the matchups, I know a lot about two of the guy. Two of the guys are going to be uh, talking about mm. that is Master Chief and the Doom Slayer, of course. Because I we'll uh, get to that. We'll I get to that. Way... We'll get to that. Don't give it too much away. Don't give too mm, much away, yeah. Red. So moving on to our main prompt. We've lined up a few scenarios where named space marines will essentially face off against fictional characters from other universes. And, of course, it's entirely feasible that the conclusions we draw in this discussion may well be entirely wrong. You know, you are so welcome to your own opinion. And if you think we're wrong, or if you think we're right, you're entirely welcome to come to our comments section and say as much. So, without further ado, let's talk about our first lineup. I've got here written on my little thing... Um, the Doom Guy one. However, do you want to do the Master Chief one first, Red? Uh, we can do either one. Uh, I know about the same. I'm, my knowledge about both of them is about the same. Excellent. So, our first lineup we'll do is Malum Kaido versus the Doom Guy. Now, for anyone who doesn't know who Malum Kaido is, if you've played Vault Gun, he is in fact the protagonist from that game. And if you don't know who Doom Guy is, uh, come out from under your rock, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of the most prolific video game characters that was ever made. Uh, yeah, mm. he is actually, I believe, Malam, not Malam Kaido, I believe the Doom guy is almost as old as Games Workshop itself. Maybe maybe Games Workshop has like maybe five or six years on him, but Doom guy is ancient. He's older than all of us as a character and as a concept, I believe. Fun Oof. fact, do the, initial, the first Doom games that were like the pixelated like uh, NCS ones, or are actually the grandfathers uh actually like the great grandfathers of halo being that their source code was used oh, to make yeah. half-life and half-life source code was used to make halo is that true <clears throat> half-life source oh because it was because of them really yeah really yeah i feel like i know that I'd, I'd ask to elaborate on it but i don't think i'd understand the context so i'll just <laughs> take that at face value well, they just took the base code that the game that the games were being able to run at with the systems installed and just make them into the new things. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I didn't hmm. know that at all. I've seen um, I've no seen clue, footage actually. of of uh, Alpha Halo when the Master Chief looked totally different. You know, I've seen I've seen images of that. I did not know that fact. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Right, gentlemen, let's talk about Malam Kaido versus Doom Guy. So uh, I haven't actually planned how we're going to do this. Whether we're going to take hands and take <laughs> votes. <laughs> but um, whilst on one hand, Doom Guy wins everything because we, you know, we can all justify saying that. Uh, Moot has in fact played Bolt Gun, and oh, yeah. cer- certainly knows that Malam Kaido is no fucking pushover. <clears throat> no. Nope. Well, let's start. Well, let's start. Let's start by saying that let's not th- try and think about a justified reason why they're fighting each other. Let's just, for the sake of 
the yeah. argument they're just fighting each other and y- yeah the audience at home can fill in whatever reason they're fighting each other for yeah i mean i think we actually i think it's fair to say that if these two motherfuckers ever met they'd probably get on really well <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a fair point yeah yeah i agree with that <laughs> well it isn't uh okay i'm i'm not totally brushed up br- brushed up on my uh doom lore here but isn't doom guy part demon no, or Doom fully guy, demon. Doom guy is God. He, oh, Doom look. guy <laughs> is God. You've heard it here first, uh, ladies and gentlemen. God himself. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> if, so, the Doom Slayer, he was gifted a basically God's powers to go fight demons. Mm-hmm. So he's basically immortal. <laughs> I see. I, I feel like we should abandon Malam Kaido and put here. Uh, <laughs> Ultra Instinct Shaggy, just to give Doom Guy a fair fight. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if you if you play the game, like in the, in the Doom in the Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal games, like you, it's a gameplay mechanic that you die. But like in reading the lore, the only thing that could kill something at Doom Slayer's actual level is another primordial entity like um, Davon, which is the final boss of the DLC. Spoiler alert! But it's been out for years, so. That's your yeah, own fault. That's no, that is your own fault. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, hold up. Before we go deep diving and licking Doom Guy's asshole too much, let's let's try <laughs> and power scale Malam Kaido a little bit, just a little bit, because I, I know I think we can safely say, and I don't want to say this, but we can safely say that Doom Guy trumps most of the guys on this list, if not all of them. However, Malam Kaido is kind of insane. So the the very first opening bit or uh, in in Bot Gun had the drop the drop pod crash. Uh, and that drop pod, that drop pod crashed that killed every single other stern guard veteran in the squad outright just fucking killed them instantly malam kaido stepped out totally unscathed so immediately we can assess that he is leagues above stern guard veterans and stern guard veterans are some of the most adept space marines out there he's built different yeah. he is just well, built different he just built different <laughs> well i mean uh, i'm thinking uh, i'm thinking about this uh, out of gameplay perspective that because sure, yeah. you know that's a good way of doing I, it because that actually evens the playing fields a little bit i think so and with that in mind we have two beings who actively fight and demolish demons of high very high caliber i i would almost in that case in that sense with that power level scaling in mind probably say that uh malleus is Malum, sorry, is probably a bit above Doom Guy. Just Whoa. because of the sh- sheer <laughs> amount of greater demons that he cuts through. Obviously, you know, game logic. Game but... logic, yeah, of course. Though it wouldn't be easy hearing you play versus at the Keeper's Secret was an experience. Oh god, no, sweet Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I wish I, I wish I was as good as Malum Kato. That was a fucking <laughs> travesty. I was for for anyone I was just playing it uh, with the, these guys around. I wish I were fucking recording it. Man was it a fucking pain in my asshole <laughs> with the fucking <laughs> Christ as Red Aaron and Tom can attest to. I heard more Swedish slurs in a lifetime in, in one hour. <laughs> I mean, have you guys played any of the new Doom games? I, I played uh, the played 2016 one. I played both 16 and Eternal. I played yeah. the base yeah. game for Eternal. So yeah. you so you have so you have a good concept of what they what Doom guy goes up against at the very least. Oh yeah. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing that he defeats is the icon of sin, which is legitimately an imperator-sized demon. Mm. Yeah. The yeah. Icon of Sin, if anyone doesn't know, is... I'll put a picture of it on the screen now. The Icon of Sin is the giant, cybernetic, uh, goat, humanoid, demon thing. I think, uh, Red, could you please explain the Icon of Sin a bit more? Because that's all I know. That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> the Icon of Sin is the revived son of one of the Sentinels. And the demons, for some reason, turned him into a gigantic... Um, the Icon of Sin. This ginormous demon that they augmented with uh, cybernetic armor. For uh, completely relevant, you know, just reasonable reasons. It's just a a great idea, obviously. The the great idea was that Heaven and the Angels were trying to use it as a weapon to destroy Earth. Ah, as Mm. as one does, obviously. Yeah, Yeah. uh, such casual Saturday shenanigans. (laughs) (laughs) But on the same thing, the Con Maker is supposed to be basically an immortal deity as well. Like a greater... Mm. 
You got to explain what these things are, my man, because I don't know what that is. In in the base game of Doom Eternal, the the makers are the angels. Basically, they're the keepers of like reality, and the con maker is their leader. The con maker is supposed to be this immortal figure that gets reincarnated every now and again, but the yep. Doom Slayer fucking stomped her into the ground and ended her entirely <laughs> from like unre- not being able to reincarnate anymore. On I top see. of that, hmm. he has also killed God himself. <laughs> yeah. That'll yeah. do it. And, that, and, as soon as he, and as soon as he killed God himself, all of the demons went bye-bye as well. He's basically like <laughs> the equivalent of getting rid of the warp entirely. Okay, well, that's fair. Well, can we... <laughs> I think that's that's fair. But let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about Malam Kaido a little bit, because... Uh, when we, if we forget the Doom guy for a minute and look at 40k's power scaling amongst space marines and other sorts of things, I think we can safely say that Malam Kaido is leagues above even the strongest custodians. He's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like, this guy casually would fucking ass whip greater demons whilst being molested by other lesser and <laughs> standard <laughs> demons at the same time, you know, simultaneously. Absolute uh, odd bastard. From I from think... my own from my own experience, mostly molested by little fucking green uh, nerdlings <laughs> and uh, those fucking plague toads, <laughs> bastards, we, all of them. We yeah. do a mild amount of trolling. <laughs> oh man, the plague toads need to make a comeback. That shit's fucking iconic. The best thing, <laughs> the best thing to come from the bolt gun game is every like everyone doing like their fan comics about how everyone's terrified of Melancato. Yeah. <laughs> he's like always in the corner, like being feral and shit. No, just Malum Kaido on a on a leash with <laughs> Captain or Lieutenant Titus holding the leash. <laughs> yeah, he's like crouched uh, yes, over yes, like yes, a gremlin. Yes, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I need to find out who did that artwork because I'm putting it on the mm. screen now. I will yeah, uh, I will endeavor to find out who did that original bit of art and try my best to quote them. No promises though, but that shit is fire. Him the best thing about, the the best thing about uh, Malum is that he talks shit to the fucking enemies in the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Does he? Voiced by Rahul Kohli, I believe his name is. Yeah, sounds familiar. Sounds I don't powerful. know who that is. He, uh, Rahul Kohli is a... Oh god, I, I don't want to upset him. He might listen to this. He probably won't, but let's say let's say let's let's assume he doesn't listen to him. Matt Roll Coley is a I want to say a B list actor, really great. Some of the stuff he's been in, he was in uh, Netflix's Midnight Mass as the uh, chief of police. Um, long story short, he has been a 40k fan for decades, um, and it was sort of a last minute decision to have him voice Malam Kaido because Malam Kaido was going to be the silent protagonist. And I believe when they heard about Raul Coley's interest in 40K, they were like, holy shit, should we just have him reach out to just make some fucking lines for our guy? And they did. I think that's the thing as well that I really appreciate, getting someone who gives a fuck, giving someone who really cares about the setting to oh, yeah. actually sort of, you know, voice the character or characters, you know? I think that's a really great and honorable thing to do, you know? Mm. Put a picture oh, of yeah. Bill on the screen right now. Um Games Workshop is the only company that does not give a fuck about their own audience more than the audience itself. Uh, pfft, yes, yes. Well, that's well. Well, this is the thing. Um, oh, Mooch, you can tell us who it is. But Bolt Gun can wasn't I? produced by GW. It was produced by um, who was it, Mooch? Uh, uh, oh come on! You watched the opening of the game enough times. I, God, I, I <laughs> you're, you're asking me I, to 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 quote you, uh, fucking memory suboptimal. You are a uh, fucking failure. <laughs> I will put the, I will put the <laughs> name put on of the screen. Focus, focus, focus <laughs> entertainment. Focus entertainment. Thank you, Moose. Thank you, Moose. <laughs> anyway, I try. I try. Are you proud of me, Dad? <laughs> I think it all boils I, down. It, I mean, it all boils down to <laughs> <laughs> fuck. I love no. you, son. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Sorry, Red, please continue. Next five minutes. But, um, I, I mean, it boils down to, yeah, from the gameplay perspective, Malum fucking stomps uh, a lot more powerful entities on the regular than I would say the demons are from Doom 2016. Yeah. It's like, mm. one, I mean, like, and most of the time, like, the Doom Slayer shit is uh, just in the lore, which half of the people who played the fucking game don't even know about to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, like honestly, oh god, it's 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 hard though because I think I think they're more or less equal, but they if if using game logic, I think 
Malum comes on top. Well, well let me I would ask actually you this. say, oh, does yeah. Malum ever rip demons apart with his own hands? The chainsaw's close enough, right? It's, it's close enough. Close yeah, enough. He doesn't but, actually do it physically with his own hands. That's true. But the Doomslayer vivisects fucking like greater, uh, <laughs> like the greater demons from Doom, not Warhammer. I will say this: with the exception of the Doom guy's strongest weapons, so on average, mm. I would say that Malam Kaido has stronger firearms at his disposal. Oh, pff, oh hmm, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I was just, I was just, I was just thinking about that. Like, I think. Possibly, if if they are allowed their own, like their their like best top tier weapons, I think the Doom, Doom guy will definitely well, that's it, yeah. win. Let, 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 let's ask this: what uh, first one would be an unarmed fight, one with their basic weapons, and one with their strongest weapons? Mm. Uh, sadly, and I really don't want to admit this, but sadly, I think Doom guy wins on both accounts. Mm. With the unarmed yeah. and the str- and the strong weapons, yeah. I mean, yeah, the I BFG think... just fucking like incinerated. Well, this is, yeah, no, nothing's being <laughs> that. But I think I will say as a middle ground, I will say as a middle ground, if we take their average arsenal, I think Malum has a much better chance. I'm not going to say he'd win, but I'd say he has <clears> a mu- much better odds. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah, I agree with that. <coughs> right, gentlemen, I'm, I'm going to cut this next bit out because I need to piss desperately. <laughs> I will be back in like three minutes. Okay. Okay. Keep pause All right, man. Let's time back in. Let's let's. Uh, okay, so while he's gone, guys, mm-hmm. um, I have an idea for taking over the podcast. Mm-hmm. First, we uh, we have to go. To, so we have to go to England. I bring the duct Already tape. There. So I'm ahead of you. So in, what's that? The one step ahead of you. Already here. Ah, okay, awesome. All right, great. Uh, so I need someone to bring. Uh, Chloroform. Tom doesn't know this, uh, but I already gave him AIDS last time I was there. <laughs> oh my god! It's just, we're just waiting for the fucking clock to hit zero at this point. Oh no! I shot him in the kidney. He hasn't registered it yet. No. Christ. I mean, he. I mean, he also he already had lost most of his hair, so he's not going to notice for a while. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Well, that's that's wonderful because what he doesn't know is that I hit, I hit, I hit I his ass with a radium a... rifle when he was asleep. Oh my god. <laughs> smash smash cuts to a scene of like me in like full fucking lead uh, like apron and armor big goggles and there's like a huge fucking like <laughs> x-ray thing like an inch above fucking Tom's bed Jesus Christ <laughs> well, that's, that's wonderful so because then, then he I'm won't back. be ready for the oh okay <clears throat> yep mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep mm-hmm. back to it what the fuck are you doing where were we <laughs> nothing no, what the no. f- moots? Carry on. We're uh, so uh, Malum uh, Kato versus Doom guy, right? Yeah. Are you yeah, sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know what? One last point with the Malum versus Doom guy thing. I might be mm-hmm. more on Malum's side if Malum had his if the people of like whatever world he was on had an alarm specifically for Malum arriving. Yeah. <laughs> In Doom Eternal, when the Doom guy walks onto the UNSC, oh, yeah. like. Orbitable the station. UNSC. <laughs> or, uh, not, whatever, whatever sci-fi government that they have, right? Yeah. <laughs> he walks onto the station, and there's immediately an alarm going. The Doom Slayer has arrived. Run. <laughs> <laughs> like when it's he grabs the BFG. It, when he grabs the BFG, there's a, a there's a system that will just just like make the. BFG 10,000 explode to prevent him from getting it. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets lads. it in the end. <laughs> yeah. Right, gentlemen, let's talk about our next lineup. Now, this uh, one of the characters in this one, our fictional character, has been a point of controversy when we talk about Warhammer 40k Space Marine versus for a very, very long time. And now, Red and I are uh, kind of aficionados on the lore of this character. So I believe you, may, if you are in the camp of this character would get stomped by a space marine, you may find some disagreement here tonight. And that is the theoretical battle between Kaito Sicarius and the Master Chief from the Halo series. Boy, oh boy. 
this is going I, to cause, uh, this is going to make a lot of people uh, yeah. mad. Yeah. Mm. I, mm. I can't oh, wait. I, you, I will stay quiet typing, for a little bit. I'll stay quiet for a little bit. You typing the comments right now upon hearing that. <laughs> I, I, li- I live. I live off of whatever salt <laughs> and like anger you have. I want you to know that. I'm going to go down. I'm going to read all your comments, and I'm going to enjoy it. It gives me life. There's nothing oh you can God. possibly say <laughs> to deter me from thinking otherwise. <laughs> Not only that, you are also wrong. <laughs> oh my god. Well, we haven't said anything well, yet, Red. We I, haven't said I, anything I, yet, bro. I know exactly. I think, exactly. I think this con- con- oh, god. I think this confirms that Red is a chaos god, honestly. This is- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these powers of foresight are fucking unmatched. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fueled by salt. <laughs> I'm receiving a vision as we speak. I see a lot of butthurt Warhammer fans. <laughs> 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 oh goodness right shall we get the obvious out of the way i will despite being a big fan of the master chief i will for argument's sake play the average warhammer fan here for a moment and again audience i'm terribly sorry but we have to do this so actually the master chief isn't as strong <laughs> as space marine he's kind of smaller and slower and his armor kind of fit okay <laughs> Hey, space me. Oh my god. Did you not see Mommy as cow got lifted the Nequan pylon? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> retort. Well, to begin with, um, the Master hmm. Chief's Mark V Molnir armor is so advanced <laughs> that when a regular person tried to put it on, it twisted his fucking spine in half. <laughs> I remember that. It just killed the guy. Yeah. Can you imagine? The, it's like that scene from Iron Man. Like this, this, the incoherent screamings when the suit just twists. Yeah. <laughs> like, Oof. Molnir armor already augments the, like, superhuman physiology of the, um, of the Spartans, like, to almost double. Kind of like the Space Marine armor, but it's a, li- a bit more in-depth than the novels. And yeah. I haven't really read all the novels. I've read some excerpts from there's, most of them. There's but. actually... It's actually quite funny. There is something like, uh, I could be talking out my ass, but there's something like 36 Halo novels. That is bordering on like half of what's available for the Horus Heresy. Now that alone is huge. Yeah, that's pretty big. Damn, yeah. I had no idea, actually. No, it's crazy. I remember watching a video, I can't remember his name, but I remember watching a YouTube video where a guy sat down and gave a review of every single Halo novel over the course that was of two the, hours. Uh, Jesus oh my Christ. Christ. Brian David Gilbert from, uh, from Polygon. Oh, okay. Oh, son of a bitch, he watched it as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus. Well, uh-huh. okay, so I, I don't know a whole lot about Halo. Um, I played a, a bit of uh, Reach, uh, and uh, but I have read some book excerpts, and I know for a fact that, sure, book Master Chief is a completely different beast to the game, uh, Master yeah. Chief. That's, that's, that, that is very true. Well, actually, I say that. You know the elephant from Halo, the, the, from Sand Trap. Yeah. yeah. Te- oh yeah. Technically, he can flip the thing. I mean, yeah. if we're talking from yeah. a gameplay huh. standpoint, I'm just, I'm just saying. I know that's not law compliant, but he can flip the thing. You know, that thing must weigh at least thirty tons. Yeah, like well, he he fl- he flips like huge shit on the regular and he literally swats back rockets with his bare fucking hands <laughs> whenever <laughs> he gets the chance <laughs> so, he's not a normal dude <laughs> it's, uh, he's not yeah he's I, not just a guy in armor i no. tell you what i own that i really wish i flopped out for this episode mm-hmm. i have the so in 2011 so about 12 years ago i bought the halo reach legendary edition when i was a wee babby Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And in that came a physical copy of Doctor Halsey's journal. Now I don't, I don't expect you and Aaron Ooh. to know who Doctor Halsey is, but I know Red does. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I do as well. Oh, you do Spartan excellent. Mom. And, Spartan mom, yeah, absolutely. And in that book details some really fun stuff about her sort of creation process with uh, the Spartans. Um, and one of the things I think I took away from that book. Now, again, audience, I might be talking out my ass. Uh, is the reaction times that Spartans have. So when we're talking about physical strength, the mental capacity Spartans have, the reaction times they have, the ability to think and assess a situation, the descriptors for that are more akin to how Warhammer 40k describes the reaction times of custodians than it does of space marines. Now, I'm not talking about their physical strength. Mm. I'm just talking about their ability to see a situation and instantly assess what the best course of action is. You know? Mm. 
It's very yeah. interesting. I mean, uh, I mean, Master cool. Chief is called the Demon by a conglomeration <laughs> of alien races for a reason. And I might point out that conglomeration of alien races, uh, many people have agreed. Now, I'm not sure many people will disagree, but many people have agreed that that conglomeration of alien races, the Covenant, would almost certainly be able to hold its own in the Warhammer 40k universe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, on top of that, uh, like I previously stated, when mass, like in game, you can flip tanks over. That the 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 lore reason is that I mean, they can actually logic. just they can no, but they can actually fucking do that. Yes, no, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people look at Master Chief and they'll look at he's a, a lot more slender in frame and his muscles are a lot more concentrated and smaller. But there's this one really excellent cutscene that's seared into my memory from Halo Three where the Master Chief is stood next to, um... Oh, what's Catherine Halsey's daughter called? Uh, Miranda Keys. Where... Oh, thank you. Where, she, where he stood next to Miranda Keys, and this motherfucker is guaranteed 100% the size of a Space Marine. There is zero <clears throat> doubt in my mind that this guy would be absolutely 100% at home in Astarte's armor. Like, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like seven foot five or something. Yeah, he's literally Shaquille O'Neal if Shaquille O'Neal had the brain of a demigod. <laughs> it's kind of nuts. <laughs> on, on top of that, Master Chief survived falling from fucking orbit. <laughs> yeah. He did, that, yes. Which, which, which is something we have, lore-wise, we know Space Marines can't. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, Case in point, the Stern Guard veterans in the drop pod uh, yeah, from the drop gun. pod, too. Yeah. They were instantly designed to protect them. Sp <laughs> fucking Master Chief just fell. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but on on that topic, I highly recommend everyone reading the uh, the short story "Terminal Velocity" in the Size of the Emperor book. Great oh, read. Oh, oh, that's a really interesting pick. <laughs> Please elaborate. Well, it's. Well, it's it's uh, as it says on the tin, I suppose. It's about a space marine falling from orbit and what he does in his last moment of life. <laughs> 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 it's uh, it's pretty great. Uh, this, sorry, please continue. No, I was on. But to be fair, we did say at the start of this segment we didn't say a normal space marine versus the Master Chief. No, we said Kaito Sicarius. Kaito Sicarius mm. is no normal space marine this motherfucker has more plot armor than any other space marine <laughs> in fact the only person in f in fiction that has more plot armor than kaito sicarius is uh who's that fucking who's the commissar yarek yarek no the, the other Kyphus one is kane kaifus kane ah, Kyphus. Okay. Is, he, is he a commissar <laughs> yes yeah, he's yeah, Commissar Kaifus Kane. Yeah, I mean, that guy's whole shtick is plot armor, so we'll forget about that for a minute. <laughs> Lucky as shit. But, I mean, but, let's, but to be realistic, Kaifus Sicarius is, you know, a, the Ventrix Guard captain, and he has a lot of experience. But again, mm. Space Marines don't just level up their stats the older they get. Like, he That's still like, has baseline Space Marine uh, abilities. True. Sergeant Sidonius from Space... Is his name Sidonius? Sergeant Sidonius from Space Marine 2009 or 2010 or 2011. He was, in fact, older than Captain Titus, but Titus was the uh, the stronger combatant, so age does not equal experience. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. So we can't, we can't pull sure. back on that one. But, however, as we know from... Uh uh, lure as well. We know that <laughs> the the older space meets get, the heavier their balls get. So it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, are we, talk, are we talking true. about Barbara Stantio again? Okay. Uh, of course we are. <laughs> titanium <laughs> balls. <A> titanium <laughs> balls. Go watch that show if you haven't already. Go watch but it. I, but I will agree that Catasigarius is probably one of the more deadlier, like close quarters combatants. Yes, because yeah. he just has so much experience, but. I think in terms of Space Marine versus Spartan, he might be a teensy bit stronger if I had more like measurements on the, Spart well, well, the Marine's strength. Well, actually, I'd like to throw something out there for you, Red, because um, we've got all these different variants of Spartans, but let's stick to Spartan 2s, which is what the Master Chief is. Yeah. Not all Spartan 2s were created equal. Oh, you know, yeah, definitely. You know, and this is the thing, it's a, it's a total roll of the dice with how strong uh, and how... Uh, how intuitively and naturally the Spartans take on their augmentations. The Master Chief is the example of the only example of a Spartan taking on those augmentations to perfection. If we look at you, Mahalo Reach, right? 
Mm-hmm. Do you remember Spartan George? Yeah, George. George. Big George. Everyone oh. forgets that George isn't actually a Spartan three. He's a Spartan two. Mm-hmm. And this when, mother- you, when you when you meet Halsey in Hate Reach, uh, George calls her mum. <laughs> Does he? I forgot about that. Holy but, shit! Yeah. So I mean, that just that tells you an awful tragic. lot about the Spartans, the Spartan two's relationship with Halsey, because Halsey criticizes heavily every other generation of Spartan, but she looks at the Spartan twos like children. You're absolutely right. Yeah, she, but, like in in lore, like everyone hates Halsey, but the Spartan twos. <laughs> yeah, and they, well, that's because they understand what they are. And their purpose, and they don't care that they were built to put down insurrections. They just understand their their role in the larger picture, and they're totally okay with that. Mm-hmm. I think that the, the comparison I was trying to make, though, is that Spartan George compared to John One One Seven is that w- leagues apart. Now, yes, George is the size of a tank, but he moves like a tank, whereas the Master Chief is the size of a tank and moves like a feather. You know, yeah. uh, so no two Spartan twos are the same. So comparing Spartan twos versus Space Marines is kind of a bit inept because Space Marines, typically the average battle brother, are uh, the average battle brothers are all very compar- comparable. But the average Spartan mm-hmm. two is that there is no average Spartan two. It doesn't fucking exist because mm-hmm. they are all leagues apart. George was put into a team with Spartan threes, which are weaker than Spartan twos, because it was best suited for him and his strength. The Master Chief mm-hmm. acts as a solo act. I mean, yes, sure, he was part of Blue Team for a long time, but the Master Chief can operate as a solo act because he's built to. Yeah, you know, it's just I mean, built George, different. Yeah, he's George just- was also said. <laughs> George was also bigger and stronger than Chief. Was he really? Yeah, he just wasn't as fast as him, and he uh, was a bit more human than Master Chief as well. Uh, well, I know that last bit. He was very human. You can see that mm. in the way he speaks to the civilians on Reach in the opening mission. It's actually mm-hmm. quite wholesome, I would say. Mm. Oh, man, I'm, still not, I'm still not over George's death, guys. I'm yeah. still not over it, honestly. <laughs> you know what the, fu- you know what the fucked that. up part is about his death? Is that he died thinking he saved everybody. Aww. Yeah. Rip. Yeah, absolutely. Top and 10 he- more grimdark <laughs> universes than Warhammer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Christ. But anyways, let's um, bring it back. Let's bring it back. Oh, no, go on, Moves. Yeah, no, I, I, I was just kind of going to bring it back to, I, I suppose, the... I suppose it's kind of talk. Uh, uh, God, I forget the words, but uh, essentially, I am. I, I think one thing that will take the Master Chief back against uh, uh, Kato, Kato is simply the fact that I don't think Spartan weaponry is as strong as or as impactful that's true. as Space Marine weaponry. However, mm-hmm. and yes, that's true. That's very true of their average weaponry. Well, let's draw that, the yeah. same comparisons we brought we brought with Malam Kaido versus Doomguy. We've got our three categories that we've on the fly created. The unarmed yeah. fight, <laughs> the fight with their average weapon, and then the fight with their strongest weapon. So in, mm. an, in an unarmed fight, and I'm going to say something controversial, I know I'm going to get shit for this, and the video is going to get a bunch <laughs> of dislikes. I'm really sorry. This is just what I believe. I think in an unarmed fight, Kaito Sicarius versus the Master Chief would be pretty evenly fucking matched. The reaction times on both of them are insane. The armor mm-hmm. power of both of them are insane, and the physical strength of both of them is utterly insane. If we take their average weapon, you know, the average standard weapon that both of them have access to, I think Ma- I think uh, Sicarius wins out by a landslide. Mm-hmm. And that's just what I believe. And then I think with the strongest weapon, uh, sadly, I think it's Sicarius again. Uh, uh, Are do you I? sure? Uh, hmm. the, 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 a power sword versus a thunder hammer. The brute thunder hammer no, is quite the, the, no, the funny. I mean the gravity funny hammer. Little, the gravity hammer. Sorry, yes, the gravity oh, hammer yeah. is quite the funny little device, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Kato doesn't use a thunder hammer though. He uses a fat off power fist, doesn't he? he some sort uh, of it's fist. That power sword. Yes, he uses. No, Kaito Sakaris uses a big old power sword, if I recall correctly. Yes, he yes, he does. The fun thing about the thunder hammer, not the thunder hammer, the gravity hammer from Halo is. Uh, that shit in the law, the written law, can do much wackier shit than it can do in the game. <laughs> oh. You know, yeah, it has tell. its own gravity feel. That's how it punches so hard. Imagine like uh. a heavy grav gun, except it's got the ability to do a bunch of different things whilst just held in your hand. Mm-hmm. God, All right. I think at one point the brutes use it as a ranged weapon as well. They do, they do. Yes, no, you're absolutely power. right. Yes, it's really quite funny. But is it, um, just a, is it a dumbed down wizard staff? Is that what you're telling me? Is that what that thing fucking is? <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you know... Um, but I think- ca- counterpoint, a big thing about Chief is how adaptable he is. So, yes. if he was able to get his hands on a bolter, like, two seconds in, he knows how to use it. 
Yes. Uh, well, actually, that's, that's actually very true. I mean, that's again, it speaks to the mental capacity of the Master Chief. And again, not Spartan 2s, just the Master Chief. His ability to look at something and go, I know exactly what the fuck I'm doing right now in, in a fraction of a second is kind of insane. It's broken. I will say it's broken. Mm. <laughs> on top of that, he has a force field, which is basically an iron halo on him. He does. Oh, yeah. Everyone underestimates that thing because oh, overcharged plasma pistol. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, whatever. But it, <laughs> we, we, again, we know that looking at the lore of the Master Chief, ain't no fucking way a plasma bolt that's overcharged is going to hit him because he's literally got the Matrix, um, <laughs> the, 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 the Matrix OC fucking. Yeah, I'm just going to dodge that bitch. You yeah. know, it, he just yeah. the Master. Chief, I think people, especially Warhammer fans heavily underestimate the master chief as a character and again not spartan twos the average i would actually i'll tell you what i'll say to try and win me some points back <laughs> the average space marine the average battle brother would decimate the average spartan two and the average space marine would decimate the average spartans three four and five i will say that wholeheartedly fully comfortably but the master chief is a very different beast on top of that <sighs> if we look in lore he regularly overpowers and fights like kills brutes that are physically yeah. stronger than he, even he is yeah i mean the the brutes have physical strength that actually i would go as far to argue surpasses that of a space marine they're like ogre yeah. strength almost yeah literally yeah uh, no i agree with that anyway so can we agree on these three things uh fist of, uh hand to hand combat maybe cuffs. <laughs> maybe the master chief comes out on top maybe Maybe not, mm. maybe. With the average weapon, the Master Chief definitely gets fucked up. I'm sorry, yeah. but the UNSC assault rifle is not holding a candle to the uh, Imperial no. water. It's just <laughs> not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And in examples of the highest strength weapon, could go either way. You know? Yeah. Could go either that's way. A, that's a fair take. Yeah, I it depends on that. what. The, yeah, it, it depends on what the master chief has access to to be to begin yeah. with. Because his main, like, again, Spartans aren't meant like space marines are big. You know, big space knights and they fight in melee a lot. So that's what we're synonymous with. But like yeah. the Spartans are more ranged combatants, but they can fight Absolutely. in melee and they do often. So it yeah. all depends on what the master chief en ends up getting and how he prefers to fight the battle. Because in almost every battle he's in, in the books and even in the games, the Master Chief always makes it to where he's fighting from where he wants to. Yes, yeah. well, that's it. He is, he is a thousand. Uh, this thing he takes into into account the fact that he. Uh, oh my god, I want to move on, but I can't because <laughs> there's, there's so much info dump about the Master Chief. But he takes into the into um, calculations that he is a lone combatant. So <clears> he won't go into a battle the same way Kaito Sicarius does with a whole horde of motherfuckers behind him. You know, and again, I will say, if the Master Chief goes up against Kaito Sicaris and just a squad of tactical tactical space marines, the Master Chief is in a lot of trouble. That ain't going to yeah, end too well. <laughs> but, <laughs> however, in the enclosed scenario of the two of them together, again, on average, Kaito probably comes out on top. But there is no way in hell the Master Chief isn't giving him a run for his money. Mm. Well, yeah, Kaito is a master duelist for a reason. He uh, yes. I mean, like, uh, old Lord Kato was kind of insufferable and was a Mary Sue, but new Lord Kato actually has a lot of charm to him. That's true. But I will say, Agreed. Devil's Advocate, the Master Chief is still a Mary Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Stu, actually. Yeah, yeah. Get, get <laughs> Gary your Stu. fucking pronouns right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Master Stu. <laughs> Master Stu. <laughs> Master Stu. <Stew. laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to something that potentially might be even more controversial. Ooh, I want this to one talk. Is interesting. I know, I know. I want to talk about Chief Librarian Tigerius. Like about librarian. Librarian. <laughs> librarian. <laughs> librarian. Librarian. <laughs> versus the one and only Darth Vader. Chief Librarian Tigerius, for that matter. Yes, yeah. Chief Librarian Tigerius versus Darth Vader. You know, hmm. before we start, I was gonna, th I was thinking of a better matchup would be Azek Armin, but then I remembered Armin is a fucking powerhouse. Uh, Armin, right. yeah, no, he would. Well, if you he think would, he would rip turn, Darth uh, Vader apart, he, he would have turned Darth Vader into a little ball of. Uh, fucking cancer and just tossing him into the fucking well of eternity <laughs> if he wanted. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, Here, Mo Moose get has two heads. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Moose, Moose has the uh, the C card. Don't don't fucking don't fucking lynch him for that, please. <laughs> or lynch him. Either way I get anything. Yeah, oh no, we'll do it. Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, do absolutely. It. Do, do it. I want to see you try. Well, I'll enjoy it. it. I'll fucking enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you uncomfortable. Moots actually eats his tunes. Please don't fight me. I'll moan. <laughs> Don't don't bully me. I'll come. <laughs> but to be fair, oh God. though, I mean, just I, I'm going to quickly go off on a tangent. I don't want to stay on it too long, but talking about Isaac Aruman, at the end of Bolt Gun, coming back to Malam Kaido versus Doom Guy, the final boss fight, the only person who Malam Kaido can't instantly dick on is mm-hmm. a sorcerer that presumably probably wouldn't hold a candle to to Isaac Aruman. Yeah, you know, so. Maybe you know, come back to Malam Kaido and think about that because because Araman can literally uh, this motherfucker has got some Infinity Stone style bullshit powers, you know. Yep. Anyways, anyways, we're not talking about uh, Araman. <laughs> we're talking about Tigarius and we're talking about Darth Vader. Now, I will go ahead because I have been a low key Star Wars fan for a very long time. The only reason I don't talk about it is because, unfortunately, I'm, I'm so glad you can come out of the closet, Tom. We're so I'm proud so, of you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll come out of the closet about other things, but not this. No, he, but, he does uh, a lady jump of the hot cosplay. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. Well, well, yeah, when we got there in Britain, all I saw was this big slimed up man on the ground oh. writhing around. Uh, now you've said that, I'm literally going to oil myself up and naked wrestle you. Oh. You're, gonna, you're fucked. Look, he looks like a bigger version of the baby from a race ahead. That's what you're answering. <laughs> Okay, you're getting wow. banned. <laughs> How do I, I don't think I might just disconnect Aaron from this call. I was just going to call him the boss, baby, but you went had to go a step oh further. I think I'm disconnecting Aaron from this call. Goodbye, Aaron. <laughs> no. Aaron <laughs> fucking dies tonight at 11. <laughs> However, anyways, seriously, though, I've been a low-key Star Wars fan for a very long time. The only reason I don't proudly proclaim that is because, unfortunately, Star Wars, as it is today, is quite embarrassing. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Got a low, you know Ollie in the Discord? Mm-hmm. Yep. Ollie is a massive Star Wars fan. I love Ollie Ooh. so, so much. And I love his love for Star Wars. However, the mainline Star Wars trilogy over the last couple of years has been... Um, Complete fucking garbage. That's, yeah. A trash fire. Yeah. Re- greatest cinema sin in history. It if, has been if, a if we, if we ever want to, I we could totally, absolutely do a fucking review of uh, of episode eight because I happily talk shit about that. I, movie. I would sooner I, fucking I, shoot myself <laughs> than watch that. I I I, fu- I suppose funny story. Short uh, before we go back to the topic at hand, I when I watched it in cinema, I remember being in complete fucking denial and in shock when I watched it. Yeah, I was. I was so taken aback, and it was only the, until the day after when I was talking to a friend where I realized how much I absolutely disliked the movie. I'll be honest with you, I had, with Star Wars Episode Eight. I had, I was on a date with a young lady, and it was going really, really well. It was going really well. Um, mm-hmm. And don't worry, audience, I'm not lying to myself, it mm-hmm. was going well. And <laughs> after, we, after we had some food, we went to go see Star Wars Episode Eight, and the date was fucking ruined afterwards. <laughs> Star Wars, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one. There's, there must be a plethora of people out there who thought, "Oh, let's go see the new Star Wars," and just ruined potential. Rel- there are children that won't be born now because of Star Wars Episode Eight. <laughs> it reminds me of the old school newspaper articles going like, "I fit M&Ms at my bum," but since I got cock blocked by Star Wars Episode yeah, Eight, literally <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <The> front page, <laughs> fucking. Anyway, well. we're meant to be talking about Darth Vader versus Tigerius. We could shit on Star yeah. Wars all night, gentlemen. Uh, and on, on that subject, I actually really like Star Wars. Or it's it's yeah, not same. that I hate it. I it's just I, got loads I really of enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and 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 even with that said, I'm gonna have to say, unfortunately, that I think Darth Vader gets absolutely bodied by Tigarius. <laughs> well, hold up, hold up for a minute. Darth uh-huh. Vader. Uh, it's a hard one because Darth Vader can do some utterly bonkers shit. He but we're is, talking canon, right? Yeah, I guess so. But the thing... I mean, we look at the comics as well. Uh, well should we talk about Legends? Star Wars Legends? Or should we leave that out? Oh, pff, well, if, if, it, if it's Legends, then, you know, then the Tigarius can eat shit, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Doom Guy's in trouble if we're talking about Ledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm but not the very thing familiar about, with Legends, Darth Vader. Uh, just busted. Just busted. Just, yeah. Just, well... Everything about Legends is busted. That's it's, true, uh, actually, yes. Yeah, Luke is basically unto a god in some of the later Legends stuff, so that's kind of yeah. what we're talking about. 
I think one of the things that I really like about Darth Vader is, and I, I, I'm going to bring this back to the versus Tigarius, is Darth Vader is perpetually nerfed. Because even <clears throat> Palpatine, even the Emperor knows that Darth Vader, if if allowed to be given a suit of armor that doesn't inhibit him, will be so fucking strong that Palpatine just simply won't be able to handle him. Which is why he's in the suit that he's in. Because it cripples yeah. him. It allows his crippling to remain. Because we know mm-hmm. full well that in within the Star Wars universe that there are augmetics that would allow... Anakin to operate as his just as good as his uh, standard self prior to falling into the uh, falling next to the lava pit on Mustafar. We know that that's a fact. <coughs> so falling it's, into the spicy bath, the spicy mm-hmm. the bath that has a little too many jalapenos in it. You know? <laughs> um, so it's 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 really interesting because when you look at the Darth Vader in that concept, we say okay, not legends, but also not hindered by the suit. That version of Darth Vader is unto a demigod. His, <clears throat> his. I mean, even in. I mean, I don't. Really, I didn't really like the Obi Wan Kenobi series that much. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't. You know, but I'll. T- I'll do anything to see Obi Wan Kenobi. Obi Wan so. series, at least. Well, quite, <clears throat> quite. But um, the scene where he just casually pulls down the ship as it's flying away and brings it to the ground and just. I'm sorry, but that is genuinely on par with Space Marine librarian shenanigans. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. That's like that's that, that there is enough to say okay. If they do fight and Vader does lose, we can look at that example and go, well, he's not going to go down easy, you know? Vader is still one of the strongest Force users, if I remember correctly. Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah. It's quite funny you say that because, again, talking about Palpatine nerfing Vader, Vader's suit is built to fuck him up. It's built to make him hindered. And yeah, the, the way that Darth Vader can pull off the bullshit that he can pull off is literally by at all times he's using... using? using his rage to fuel the suit he is literally using the force on the suit at all times to keep it in motion it's it's kind of like that fucking uh, angron meme where it's like in my one boot my sock is sliding off (laughs) i have a wedgie (laughs) (laughs) i know exactly what you mean yeah, it literally is that. You're right. By, You're so right. Uh, by by real level art, by the way, it's fucking amazing. Fuck, yeah, that's fucking funny. <laughs> but I think <laughs> I would. I think I would submit that Tigerius could decimate Vader in a in a drawn out battle. The thing about Vader and his biggest problem isn't his powers. His biggest problem versus Tigerius, in my opinion, isn't his powers. It's the fact that Vader, whether he likes to think it or not is very sentimental when it comes to fighting opponents who he looks at and goes, you're going to be a challenge. When you look at some of the extended universe stuff, I'm not talking about legends, I'm just talking about stuff that shows what happens between episodes three and four. Mm. Uh, Vader is an absolute fucking killing machine. He will kill people without even hesitating. People who should be Jedi Masters. But when he sees someone that is of such power, that is of such strength, he will take a moment to literally talk with them. He always does. He will say something to mm. them. A space marine does not have that hindrance. A space no. marine will not monologue. <laughs> a space marine will fucking turn you inside out without a, hesita- without a, a hesitating moment. You know? Smash fucking. cut into that scene from the starties where they punch in that tech... Uh, tech uh, priest. Yeah. Inquisitor. <laughs> yeah. Inquisitor. The, little, the little inquisitorial psyche. That guy got fucking yeah. mashed and those guys did not wait around. <laughs> we don't know how long he was friends with those two for. That guy got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think yeah. they knew each other for fucking probably like a hundred years at the very least, and they're all yeah. buddies. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking crushed no, his I... skull without a second thought. <laughs> yeah. Mashed was uh, absolutely... Uh, well, I, I absolutely agree with you there. I think Tigarius is just going to see this weird fucking dildo shaped uh, person and just go all right <laughs> yep i'm fucking electrocuting that <laughs> well that's actually quite funny you say that that word let's shoot him specifically because that is mm. that's actually the reason in canon why darth vader doesn't use force lightning because it would fuck his suit up yeah. and that's also yeah. the reason palpatine was able to kill him in the end mm. because force lightning and we can assume we can make a fictional leap of assumption that force lightning and warp lightning must have at least something in common right yeah, they're yeah. both. You know. like, a lightning bolt's a fucking lightning bolt. It's a fucking lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah. Darth Vader would lose to Thor, for sure. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know it, it, it would happen. 
oh no, but Darth Vader, Vader can Vader. use the force to grab Mjolnir. Darth Vader <laughs> would lose to me having a fucking taser and putting it to his throat. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Anyways, gentlemen, uh, we are burning time. Let's draw this out to a oh, close. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Dying. No, I, I see. I, I, I see. Okay, let, let's again use our totally planned ahead uh, ra- ranking system here. Given all the fist fist uh, fist like fight. Just, well in a fist f- fight Darth fight. Vader's <laughs> fucked <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's <laughs> fucked he's so unbelievably it's, fucked well, <laughs> that's, that's, all that comes to mind <laughs> is an image of them hopping out of their suits uh, ca- like uh, the space green hops out of his perfectly fine Vader just fucking falls on the floor like a wet pancake well, even just, with their suits you're talking about a, you're talking about a superhuman <laughs> throwing hands with a cripple it's just gonna go so badly <laughs> When I started saying that sentence, I d- it did not cross my mind that, yeah, you know, Darth Vader in a fucking fist fight. That's so e fun. for everyone, man. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a fucking dumb He's like, man. what am I going fucking Tigerius, who's an old man by Space Marine standards, just fucking crushes his skull with a punch. <laughs> There's two Space Marines come along, hold up with a fucking frazzled corpse while um, he beats the fuck into him like a speed bag. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick little thing, quick little side note. So the Astartes, oh, yeah. the Astartes short where they crushed the fucking head of that dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So apparently it's canon now. Please, Games Workshop basically bought it, right? Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and a buddy of mine did the math on how hard you have to punch a head with a capsule like that, thinking it's a spacesuit regulated ca- uh, like hood. Sure. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we did the math where you had to be punching about eight. 80,000 pounds per square inch to turn it to do that to a head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so and then they just shoot him for good measure. Just, yeah, just to be sure. <laughs> and th- again, this is the bolt guns we're talking about. You know, mi- little missiles. <laughs> <laughs> they probably left a hole in. You didn't see. You didn't see like a down picture of that guy, but there's probably holes in the deck where that happens to him. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. There's so, nothing all right. fucking left of that guy, and there would be nothing left <clears> of Darth <throat> Vader. <laughs> Alright, so in a fist fight, Darth Vader is mulch. So when yep. we look at their average power and their greatest power, they're they're kind of the same thing for these two characters, to be fair. Are mm. they really? I would still argue, I'm sorry, but I would still argue that Darth Vader wouldn't get instantly slapped. No, what, what, no. What, one second no, I is completely, instant, I completely I, I completely agree that uh, give, given their normal or, or, or normal equipment or whatever. We're uh, assuming then that he can use the force, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, yeah. Yeah, no, sh- fucking Darth Vader picks up ADATs even in canon. It's, yeah. uh, uh, you know, if he if he's allowed if he's allowed to use the force, um, <laughs> sure, uh, Tigarius he can probably do some sh- wacky shit. But there is one thing to throw out there. One of Darth Vader's greatest strengths, and one of the, and the thing he actually uses to destroy the majority of his opponents, both in canon and in legends is the lightsaber and regardless yeah. of the lightsaber 100% if darth vader gets into melee combat with library with librarian tigerius <laughs> or any space marine for that matter his ass is grass that lightsaber <laughs> yeah. isn't going to sh- save you cuz you could cut a space marine's fucking arm off he is not going to hesitate at throwing his was it 800 pounds of fucking force per square inch <laughs> into your fucking head <laughs> He'll use his decapitated <laughs> arm to fucking beat the shit out of Darth Vader. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Darth Vader is also like the best duelist in the universe. Yeah. In the universe at his point. I thought I was yes. Dooku. <clears throat> oh, at his point, right? Yeah. Like, um, like. Oh, I thought you said Goku. I was like, what the uh, fuck? No, that, that's <laughs> next episode, man. <laughs> like, d- okay, so get this. So Jedi's and especially Darth Vader can deflect bolt like laser shots from like the the rifles. Within like a fraction of a second, a se- second oh, yeah. at yeah. close range. So he has really quick reaction times as well. So I think like if it was a sword fight, unless Darth Vader was able to chop the fucking head off of Tigerius, he couldn't kill him. Yeah, it, it but would then actually again, that Darth very Vader specific always goes condition. after like the head. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He does. He doesn't really fuck about with his food. That's true. Uh, well, maybe in a melee fight with uh, saber versus whatever the fuck Tigerius. Actually, well, Tigerius doesn't typically use a power sword, so he, he uses a power save. Yeah. Would that would that deflect a lightsaber? It depends. Because some mm. people argue that a power sword's power field can deflect a lightsaber, but other people say no because power. Well, I mean, I'm in the shenanigans. I'm in the camp that a power sword could uh, hold its own versus a lightsaber, but I'm certainly not in the camp that a force stave could. 
Mm. Which is what Tigeria has. Psychic magic. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, unless you use psychic it. magic to shield it. So let's say in a fist fight, uh, Vader gets bodied. But in a, in a battle where everything is on the line, it could go either way. I would yeah. say that. Yeah. Although, I, although as I say I that, as, so soon as, as soon as Tigerius flops out the warp lightning, it's kind of fucked. <laughs> but then again, Vader can block that shit. All Je- Jedis can block that shit. And Vader's more powerful than any fucking Jedi. So uh, who knows? Hmm. I don't really have enough knowledge on Vader's canon to give you a definite answer. Well, let's keep that one in the air then. Let's let the uh, people in the comment section decide. So, My vote's with on that, Fuck Vader. And with that, gentlemen, <laughs> let us please draw this episode to a close. Yes, thank you. Thank you for all joining us for talking shit about basically Warhammer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I want to let you all know two things that in the end of the day, this is just like all, all these characters have their own uses in their own media. Yes. And you know, you shouldn't really take it seriously at all. You shouldn't take any of this seriously at all. But okay, on the other still side, a satire. It is still a satire. But on the other side, these opinions are also fact, and you cannot argue with this. <laughs> I hope you sleep well tonight, and fuck you. <laughs> yes. Fuck you, though. Thanks for watching, Bless. ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Red, if you would. I will fucking kill you, Tom. Time to die. Abdominus <laughs> Fox. Hi there. I imagine if you're a returning viewer, you're expecting a sexually charged photo of myself or one of the other members of the team, like usual, in front of the fireplace. However, today I've got a small announcement that I just wanted to let you all know. We finally have a Patreon, and it's live as of right now. So if you enjoy our content and you want to see more of us, I would really appreciate it if you'd go on over there and take a look. This podcast and the YouTube channel has been a huge passion project for myself, Moots, Red, and Aaron, and we have loved all of the reception and feedback we've been getting from you guys thank you so much we hope you continue to enjoy what we make our second normal youtube video went live on wednesday that's on our channel you can click and go find that we do a little bit of a deconstruction for homebrewing loyalist space marines and next week on wednesday we've got a video on the horrors and the wonders of imperial dreadnoughts coming live for your enjoyment of course and as ever thank you for watching If you'd like to speak to myself or any of the guys on the team, feel free to jump in our Discord link below. Like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Thank you all very much.